On Thursday, February 15th, a funeral service took place at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City that would shock and scandalize Catholic faithful literally the world over. The funeral service was for a well-known transgender activist and sex worker advocate. Why did St. Patrick's Cathedral authorize the service? And how did one of the church's most iconic cathedrals come to be used as a backdrop for agendas at odds with Catholic teaching? With analysis and observations, I am joined by physician, retired Army colonel, and superior of the little workers of the Sacred Heart, Sister Dee Dee Byrne, and the president of the Dominican House of Studies, Father Thomas Petrie. Thank you both for being here. Um, I, I have to begin with what the celebrant at this ceremony had to say. Near the beginning of this funeral, this is Father Edward Doherty. He is a married old priest at St. Patrick's. Watch or listen. <laughs> Well, welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Except on Easter Sunday, we don't really have a crowd that, this, that is this well turned out, you know? <laughs> what we do is we move to a... Uh, Funeral service, no mass. Okay, okay, okay. Right? Yeah, sure. So after that, we do the final commendation, we go. Okay, okay. Right. Right. Yep. Good. Father Petrie, a part of what they are reacting to. Uh, there, there are literally hundreds of people in bizarre getups, fishnets, uh, stockings, and thongs at St. Patrick's. I mean, kind of outrageous outfits and behavior. Your thoughts about the on-the-spot decision to change this service from a mass to just a funeral service? Well, obviously, they recognized very quickly, if not before the mass even started, that something was off and that this was an outrageous uh, behavior that the congregation was already demonstrating. Um, and it was very vulgar in, in a sacred place that is meant for the worship of God. And so to utterly stop the mass and to try to turn it into a funeral service, a simple liturgy of the word, I suspect was as a, a pastoral decision uh, because they wanted to at least be pastoral pastoral towards the deceased and, and the deceased friends and family. But it, it was clearly uh, uh, an event that was way out of hand from the get-go. Yeah. And look, that may be one of the best choices they made to, to you know, at least uh, preserve the sacrament and the Eucharist from, you know, desecration in, the, in this environment. Sister Didi, I'm at St. Patrick's several times a month. They have security everywhere. When they saw the posters which were placed in front of the sanctuary, which read, and I, I don't mean to scandal any, but anyone, but this is what it read both in Spanish and English, mother of whores, and they had a picture of this person there. Shouldn't that have been an indicator, in addition to the costumes, that security should have shut this down before it ever began? Absolutely, Raymond. I mean, I can't, can't even envision... Um, how they could have. It must have just been a onslaught of people and they didn't know how to stop. But uh, basically the doors open to Satan. Um, and it doesn't surprise me because a month before, who spoke but Father Rippinger on Our Lady and the, mm. how the devil can get into our lives at our weakest points. And um, I guess, you know, our church has been trying to open their arms to those who have alternative lifestyles. And this is what's happened. The deceased here, sister and father, was a biological male who identified as Cecilia. Now, here was the prayer offered. Listen closely. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Cecilia in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Cecilia in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our friendship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. 
Father Doherty says, into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Cecilia in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, until we meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. Through Christ our Lord, amen, in peace. Let us take our sister to her place of rest. Father, how does that square with church teaching on sex and gender? particularly in a liturgical setting. Well, listen, the, the prayers in the, the liturgy for the funeral do have these, have the pronouns, him and her, and have places to insert names. Um, but there's given a lot of latitude and how to use those and what to do with those. Look, the church does not accept tra the transgender ideology that somehow one can declare oneself uh, a, a gender or a sex different than one's biological sex. That doesn't mean someone who suffers from gender disorder for you should necessarily be denied a funeral, but if I were going to be celebrating such a funeral, I would simply read the person's name in place of any um, any any pronouns there. Now, it's not because I'm trying to, I would be trying to uh, agree with their, their lifestyle or their decision, but out of respect for the family and the friends that knew them, however they were known. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would never mm -hmm. use uh, incorrect pronouns to describe uh, a, a man, a biological man. I think, I think you lead, you Give into the give into the sickness that way, Sister Didi. Your reaction to this? I mean, you're a religious sister. Your thoughts on a priest referring to a biological male as sister in a liturgical setting? Did that offend you, or is that just um, showing human kindness? It just I think it shows some who kind of lean on that that liberal ideology. We have to really speak truth with love with people. Uh, and as Father said, he could avoid having to go through the pronouns by saying Cecilia, even though Cecilia wasn't his birth name, and they don't even have... I tried to look it up before we had this interview, and, and it's not um, anywhere to be found. Uh, mm. This poor guy had been raped as a six-year-old, had gone through so much as a little boy, and this is what, what comes of it, where it can't add to, you know, fuel to the fire by calling this young, this um, poor soul a female. Before we get to the Archdiocese's reaction, I, I want to play for you and the audience a bit of the eulogies that were offered at this funeral service. Now, I want to warn our viewers, there's some strong language here, so families beware, you may want to remove younger children from the room, but we thought you should see what happened at St. Patrick's. Watch. <laughs> Cecilia! Ladies and gentlemen, Cecilia was born in 1972. <laughs> Imagine the shock and surprise. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, there's something that's hurting deep in our hearts because we lost our saint. This whore. <laughs> this great whore. Saint Cecilia, mother of all whores. Sister Dee, Dee your reaction to this display in a Catholic cathedral? I mean, it, it for me, um, almost made me want to vomit because our Lord is there. Uh, and it's such a sacrilege, Raymond. Um, and, you know, you would never see this in any other kind of... Um, a religious facility because the devil knows the devil's been at war with our Lord since the day he he was born and in uh, the devil knows that the one true faith is the Catholic faith and why else would they choose st. Patrick's uh, this is the only reason why uh, they would never do it in, the, in a mosque or a, a temple and and it just brings out for those of us who have such a great great love and respect for our Lord this is um, this is an insult to our faith, and we just have to continue to pray and thank God. The uh, uh, Cardinal Dolan had a mass afterwards for the insult that ha occurred. I think they need an exorcism too, quite honestly. Father Pedri, uh, you heard Sister Didi use that word sacrilege. What constitutes officially 
a, 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 a sacrilege. Does this rise to that level? Well, I think it does. I think that's why there was a massive reparation. A sacrilege is any sort of sin or vulgar, at profane act that is done precisely with the intention of um, vulgarizing or betraying the faith or mocking the faith. Now, I can't say... I can't divine the intention of the organizers of this of this event, but it certainly seems that they were hiding certain parts of this person's life. It certainly seems in how they behaved that it was intended to make a mockery of the mass, a mockery of the cathedral, a mockery of the faith, and therefore it does rise to the level of sacrilege. Citing the scandalous behavior at the funeral, the rector of St. Patrick's, Father Enrique Salvo, issued a statement claiming that the cathedral didn't know about the deceased's background. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think anyone expected a cathedral to know about anyone's background. A cathedral cannot reason. It's a building. But I'll put that aside. Cardinal Timothy Dolan, the Archbishop of New York, finally made a statement about the debacle on his podcast Wednesday. Listen to this. First of all, you know, they get a call. They didn't know the background of this woman who had died. All they know is somebody called and said, our dear friend uh, died. Uh, we'd love to have the funeral at St. Patrick's Cathedral. It would be a great source of consolation. She's a Catholic. Be a great yep. source of consolation for us, her family and friends. And, of course, the priest of the cathedral said, come on in. You're more yep. than welcome. So, which was beautiful. We didn't, we didn't know the background. Uh, we don't do... FBI checks on people right. who, who want to be buried. So anyway, then, of course, once the funeral started is when the trouble started because of the irreverence and the disrespect of the big crowd that was there. That is, was very, very sad. And uh, again, I applaud our priests who made a quick decision that, uh-oh, with behavior like this, we can't do a mass. <laughs> Father Petri, your perspective as a priest who's presided and been a celebrant at more than a few funerals, um, does this lack the vetting normal to a planning of a funeral? No, I don't think so. I mean, with all due respect to his eminence, I mean, we don't need to do FBI background checks. Uh, you know, someone you don't know comes to you, either as a priest, comes to your parish or your cathedral and asks to have a funeral for a loved one. Um, if you don't know this person, you, a, a pastor, a priest is going to say, okay, well, first, tell me who you are. Let, let me get to know you. And certainly, and I would hope this would become standard practice at a place like St. Patrick's Cathedral, especially after this event, yeah. certainly uh, one can simply Google a, a person's name and see and find a whole lot of information about most of us, um, especially if we're an activist on the Internet. Yeah, yeah. And, and with all due respect, this activist had a New York Times full obituary the weekend before. I saw it with my own eyes by accident. Sister Didi, your thoughts on the Cardinal's explanation here. And we should say and tell the viewers, a gay group told the Catholic news agency that the funeral organizers told whomever they booked this with at St. Patrick's that they should look up Cecilia's work and background. And according to the New York Times, Joe Swilling, the archdiocese spokesman, was notified by the New York Times the night before this funeral that this Cecilia was a sex worker and a trans advocate because he commented it on it at that time. Well, I'm not um, probably the best person to ask regarding the cardinal, but um, I know he's supporting his priest. But I just got off, off the phone today with um, um, one of the CFR, the senior CFR priest, uh, who is mm -hmm. very close friends with this uh, rector. And he said he did not know anything about it. They vetted poorly. Mm -hmm. They learned a, a lesson. But I trust the this father pre this priest and his relationship with this other priest so i i just have to in faith feel that the rector did what he you know they didn't do the right job but they they made a mistake and i'm sure as you said they won't ever let this happen again well now the new york aclu held a press conference demanding answers from the cathedral and the archdiocese as to why their service was cut short. They had booked a full service. They wanted a mass. They didn't get it, as you heard from the video earlier. So now they're insisting that an apology should come forward. Here's the organizer of the funeral, Cheyenne Doro Show, contradicting St. Patrick's version of events. Watch. I didn't do the charge. I didn't tell them 
her gender orientation. I didn't have to. You don't need to know what's in between her legs to respect her wishes or to respect her proper funeral. But what y'all need to know when the Pope approves same-sex marriages, Cardinal Dolan did not. So we're caught in the middle of a war. Regardless of whether they gave her the rights, what you need to know is that they violated a canon law. And that law is the, the Catholic Church's side of how the rights were supposed to be given to Cecilia. So what they're not telling you, the transparent Catholic diocese, is that canon law was her right to a free and equal funeral. She was not giving that. It was cut. Father Petrie, this certainly wasn't surprising, given how the whole affair was staged and organized. But your thoughts on the accusation that this individual's rights under canon law were violated, given the Pope's new teaching on the blessing of same-sex couples, which this individual claims is a blessing of same-sex marriage. It's remarkable, Raymond. Almost every sentence of that press statement was wrong. Uh, of course, we all know the Pope has not approved same-sex marriages. There are no such things as same-sex marriages in the church or in nature. And, uh, you know, to have a canon law, a canonical right uh, to a funeral, one also needs to not have been a manifest a sinner or a schismatic or a heretic. It's not absolute uh, that you would have a canonical right to the funeral. This is not surprising that this is happening this way because this organization, this group, has dragged the church into a political battle, which is what our culture does. We live in a culture that sees religion not only as a commodity that should serve self-affirmation and self uh, and self-promotion uh, rather than serve the worship and service of God, but in fact that the church should call what is in fact objectively immoral behavior and in fact harmful behavior that we simply refuse Used to uh, approve that kind of behavior and support it. Yeah, there's also that other canon that that says if if a funeral is going to cause scandal, it can be denied. That's also in canon law. Absolutely. So I, I don't know why someone didn't deploy one of those. Sister Didi, what do you think was the intent of this funeral at St. Patrick's? Oh, they're, it's pretty clear they were just trying to uh, harass us. They're, they she first of all. This individual, Cecilia, is not a Catholic. He he was not raised Catholic. He was seeking mm -hmm. to find a, a home in some kind of church, from what I read in an interview. Um, but yeah. they were just trying to create trouble. That's all. Hmm. Both of you, finally, Father, first, w your thoughts on what should happen here? Uh, well, uh, I, I mean, from my perspective, I think whoever approved this should come forward. I mean, the use of St. Pat's cameras were, uh, were employed to record this entire event. That wasn't accidental. And, and uh, they surely knew who this person was. We have evidence of that. How should St. Patrick's and the Archdiocese repair this situation? Well, if it, if it were me and if it were my, this were to happen in a parish that I was pastor of or rector of, I mean, yeah, there would have to be a, a real um, investigation and an accounting by the staff that allowed this, whoever allowed this. But also policies mm -hmm. really need to be put in place and there needs to be real pastoral formation on how to um, receive those who are not practicing Catholics or not active Catholics who are with wishing to have a funeral and how to vet that and how to get to know those people before we move forward with any liturgical planning. It seems obvious. Yeah. Sister Didi. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, well, Father's the pastor, but I, I would feel better if we had Father Rippinger in there and have a mass or the, or Cardinal Dolan have a exorcism mass in there and exercise every corner of that place because God only knows what's been dropped in the corner or, you know, the floors may sweat, have been swept clean, but uh, the devil can hide. We will leave it there. Sister D.D. Byrne, Father Thomas Petrie, thank you both for being here and thank you for joining us and, uh, and sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you. Thanks, Raymond.